209. Reading. Forewarned by detection, Rain looked up as Tarni opened the heavy door to the sitting room slash office that formed the main room of his and Amelia's suite. Despite its weight, the door opened silently because of the muffler sitting beside it. Rain still hadn't gotten around to talking to Roma and Tallhard about integrating proper wards into Ascension's meeting rooms, and it wasn't as simple as painting them on the walls. To work on metal, the runes would need to be done in metal, and while Roma had slowly been making progress with that kind of thing, by studying the Dark Main's vault door, that was made from steel, not titanium. Captain, Officer Sana is here, Tarney said in hand coat, drawing rain out of his musings. She's passed the test, also Vanna said to tell you we're underway. Excellent, Rain signed back. Send her in, please, and tell Vanna to handle everything until we're done. Tarney nodded, retreating and making way for the young watch officer to enter. Sana was wearing her fluffy woolen jacket, despite being out of the glacier and in Temerity's heated heart. The overawed expression on her face told Rain all he needed to know of her opinion of the metal vessel. Making her way out of the muffler's influence, she paused, fidgeting awkwardly as if unsure whether she was expected to bow. Before she could come to a decision, Tarni silently slammed the door, and the vibration through the deck plates made her jump and press a hand to her heart. T? Rain asked with a smile, gesturing to a small round table in front of him. You said you don't like coffee, so I figured... Ah, yes, thank you, Sana said, visibly swallowing and taking the offered chair and teacup. What is that thing? she asked, glancing at the muffler again. Some kind of silence ward? She looked around the room, then frowned. Shouldn't there be more of them? That's just in case someone opens the door, Rain said, not wanting to get into it. The walls are thick and the ship is more or less immune to divination, as far as we know. Oh, Sana said, looking up at one of the light bulbs jutting from the walls. And those? Am I allowed to know what those are? They're called light bulbs, Rain said. They work by heating up a little piece of metal until it glows. You're an aspirant now, so you have access to the Uncommon Knowledge series on them, provided you agree not to discuss it with non-members. We haven't decided if we want to try selling them or not. Oh, Sana said. Rain smiled. Welcome to Ascension, by the way, and sorry for wasting your time with the asshole test. Does anyone actually fail that thing? Sana asked. Even if someone didn't believe in what they're putting down, it wouldn't be hard to guess the answers. It's just common sense. It's designed for guilders, Rain said with a shrug. Oh, Sana said with a nervous giggle. I get it. Rain inclined his head in silent acknowledgement of her appreciation for his tiny joke. But then the conversation lapsed. As the silence began to grow awkward... Sana shifted in her seat, looking around. Amelia was supposed to be meeting us, right? And, um, Tallheart, was it? I'm here, Amelia said, emerging from the bedroom she and Rain shared. She was fully armoured save for her helmet, her beautiful blonde hair brushed to a silky sheen and hanging loose to her shoulders. Rain couldn't help but stare a little bit as she made her way over. Some of us aren't content to hide their bedhead behind the helmet all day, Amelia continued, smiling at Rain and using his shoulder for support as she slid into a chair between him and Sana. Tolhart just stepped out. He'll be back in a minute. Oh, uh, Sana said, drawing Rain's attention back to her to see her blushing furiously and trying to hide behind her teacup. Let's start with that. Rain said, pointing between himself and Amelia. What exactly do you see when you look at the two of us? Sana choked in the middle of a nervous sip. 
Lika, it's, uh... She coughed, then took a deep breath, setting down her cup and not meeting his eyes. Your affection for her is very... She coughed again. Public. Oh? Amelia said, turning to look at Rain with a sudden mischievous glimmer in her eyes, like a cat spotting a canary. Weren't you the one who was supposed to be uncomfortable with that sort of thing? She continued before honing back in on Sana. Her smile widened. Quick as a flash, she grabbed Rain's hand from the table. What about my affection for him, huh? She rested her cheek on Rain's shoulder, shamelessly nuzzling against him. Sana squeaked and almost knocked her teacup off the table. She began nodding vigorously, studiously inspecting the ceiling. Amelia, Rain protested, busy adding spoon after spoon of crystallized honey to a fresh cup of tea. Stop hazing the recruit. You know we have rules against that sort of thing. Amelia laughed, settling back into her chair as Rain slid the now sickeningly sweet beverage to her though she didn't release his hand to take it. Sorry, sorry. I was just trying to lighten the mood. She blushes like you used to. Rain sighed, glad his visor was down to hide the fact that he wasn't as over his shyness as she seemed to think. Is it really so obvious, Sana? Uh, yeah, Sana said, still furiously scarlet, looking like she wanted to sink through the floor. Most officers can tell if people are close or, uh, lovers. From how their souls reach out to each other, it's easier with unawakened. They aren't strong enough to reach out very far, but they're also kind of squishy, so... With an effort, she met Rain's eyes. Your soul is both, uh, strong and squishy because of the cracks. Amelia stifled a snort squeezing Rain's fingers as she quaked with suppressed laughter. Still not releasing him, she set down the spoon she'd been using to stir her tea, then took an enormous gulp before breathing out a sigh of blissful satisfaction. Oh, that's perfect. Is she talking about Santa's description or the tea? A tremor ran through the deck as the door slammed, interrupting Rain before he could think of a way to salvage his dignity. He looked up, having missed the door's opening, but already knowing Torhart to be the culprit from his solid awareness of the Savidian's soul. Sanna yelped and whirled, as if she'd been caught with her hand in a cookie jar. An instant later, she whipped her head back around again to stare at Rain, her mouth making a perfect O of surprise. She practically gave herself whiplash in her haste to look back at Torhart again. We're just friends, Rain said swiftly. Tallheart looked like he was going to say something, but paused to glance at Amelia, the barest hint of a smile flickering across his face, before it went completely impassive. He took the open seat beside Rain, fixing him with a granite-eyed stare. You wound me. With uncharacteristic speed and no warning, he snatched Rain's free hand, much as Amelia had done before. Does our love mean so little? Rain sighed. Hopelessly trying to pry his fingers from the smith's vice-like grip. It would have been slightly less impossible if Amelia hadn't still been imprisoning his other limb. Damn it, Tallheart! Amelia, stop feeding him lines! He looked up at Sanna helplessly. The young officer was quivering like Dozer at this point. Sorry. They're just messing with you. Amelia beckoned for Tallheart's hand, reaching for it over the teapot. No need to be embarrassed, Rain. I'm tired of keeping it secret. Tallheart rumbled, locking hands with Amelia to complete the triangle. Agreed. It is time for the world to know how close we three truly are. There was a dull thunk of metal striking wood, as Rain's forehead slammed into the table. A very long five minutes later, Rain inhaled deeply, closing his eyes and muttering under his breath. 
Scene 1, Take 2. Releasing the rest of his captured air in a huff, he opened his eyes to address Sana. Thank you for coming, officer. We're here to have a very serious discussion concerning what the warden asked you to teach me. Sana nodded, more than a hint of flush yet lingering in her cheeks. Rain nodded back. As I said in my note, did you burn the note? Good. Anyway, as I said in the note, Warden Vatrice left me a message. She wants you to be my reading instructor. She said she didn't mind if I shared what you told me with these two, provided that we're careful about it. Did she tell you something similar? She did, Sana said. And did she say why she wanted you to teach me? Sana responded with a shake of her head. Rain nodded, then offered her his hand. Okay, take my hand, please, and read me as I say this, because it's going to sound pretty far-fetched. Sana hesitated, glancing at Amelia, who nodded at her encouragingly. Only then did she take the proffered appendage with a nod. She closed her eyes, then opened them, meeting his gaze. Ready. Rain nodded back. Right. In a nutshell, which means in brief, Vatrice wants me to learn to protect my mind because I come from another reality, one without magic, but with things like light bulbs and the engine that powers the ship. Sana's grip suddenly tightened, jerking his hand so hard it almost upset the teacup. Some of those things are very dangerous, Rain continued heedlessly. While the warden seems to trust my judgment in what I share, she wants to make sure that I have the mental defenses to stop people from lifting anything nasty out of my head. As I'm not a mentalist and can't build defenses directly, I'll need to go in through the back door, that being my soul. I already know how to enter my inner world and even how to project myself into the liminal void, but apparently I've just been flailing around in the dark. Vatrice says reading will let me see what I'm doing, or rather, that's what the memory construct of her she built in my brain says. Once I've mastered reading, the construct will teach me what comes next. If I don't meet her standards within three months, she'll turn my brain into peach jelly. So, yeah. Sana said nothing, doing a possible impression of a cop. And you told me off for hazing. Amelia observed lightly. Rain decided to ignore her. After several long moments, Sana took a deep breath, starting slightly as she looked down at their clasped hands. She quickly pulled away. Tr tr true but... She took a deep breath. I need to... I need to ask... I have questions. Rain smiled warmly at her. I made sure we'd have all day, so... Unless Velika finally wakes up or something, we've got plenty of time. He reached for the teapot. More tea? An indeterminate while later, Rain watched Sana firmly slap her cheeks three times with both hands. Okay, the young officer said, opening her eyes. Before you can read, you need to see. And before you can see, you need to feel. When Guardian Nem came to Orman to train us, he said it would take us about four months. Rain frowned. Nem? Wasn't he the one most likely to succeed Vatrice? That's not good, Amelia said, shooting Rain a concerned look. We don't have that long. I'm quite motivated to try, Rain replied. He looked back at Sana. It sounds like I have a head start if feel means what I think it means, at least. Am I right about that? I think so, Sana said, gesturing to Tallheart and Amelia. What you said about sensing their souls sounds very much like feeling. Link sight not so much, but... She bit her lip. I should probably go through feeling anyway, just in case it's not the same. Some extra practice wouldn't hurt, besides. And Amelia and Tallheart probably don't want to pop their souls like you did. Shortcuts are a bad idea. You don't need to worry about us, Amelia said, 
we're not the ones on a time limit. Hmm, Tallheart rumbled, taking a sip of tea. All the same, Sanna said, holding up a hand and taking a deep breath. The right way is... She paused, her expression becoming distant for a moment, before she took hold of herself. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. I'll just tell you how I learned, okay? Sure, Rain said with a shrug. Santa nodded. To teach us to fail, Guardian Nem had us all wear enchanted hoods that block not only just sight, but hearing and smell too. Then he just walked through the room between us. We were supposed to raise our hands when he was near, and if we didn't, or raised our hands when he wasn't there, he'd tap us on the forehead. After a week of that, he started using a switch instead. After a month, he moved up to a dagger. I got the hang of it faster than the rest, but I still got stabbed a lot. Once he discovered how gifted I was, he started controlling his soul to make it harder for me. Leka knows how. That's guardians for you. That's horrifying, Rain said, aghast. He just stabbed his students until they learned? It's not all that unusual, Amelia said with a shrug. I've heard of people subjecting themselves to that kind of thing, particularly if they're trying to learn a mele kata without spending the point. Pain is the best teacher, Sana said, in an imitation of a gruff man's voice, tugging her jacket tighter. Guardian Nam said that a lot. Rain grimaced, making himself a to-do item to add therapy as one of Ascension's standard services. Surreptitiously, he also added a tiny sliver of immolate to his newly improved modulation script. Sana seemed uncomfortable enough without being cold, too. There was some theory, she continued after a moment, raising a hand and pinching two fingers just barely apart. She deepened her voice, quoting again. Adventurer's institution is but the fool's version of what we will learn here. The stronger a soul, the easier it is to sense. The more harm a soul wishes upon you, the more it will draw your attention. And so, I wish to hurt you. If you do not wish to be hurt, you will learn. If you do not wish to learn, the watch has no use for you. Okay, I take it back, Amelia said, reaching across to touch Sana's shoulder. Nem sounds like a total asshole. Rain nodded in agreement. And he's going to be warden after Vatrice is gone? Shit. He wasn't that bad, Sana said with a weak smile. He apologized to us after we got our plights. I just never knew what he was apologizing for until I got the memories back. About that, Rain said, struck by a thought. You seem to be reacting pretty well to having all that knowledge dumped back into you. I'm curious, is it disorienting at all? Sana shrugged. Why would it be? They're my memories. Besides, I'm used to the shock of them coming back. Oh, I didn't mention how the memory cube works, did I? Memory cube? Rain asked, deeply unsettled by her casual tone. I just assumed the warden was responsible. She still might be, Sana said, wiggling a hand. There was a rumor that she made the thing, but I'm not sure I believe it. Reading's supposed to be older than she is. Anyway, other than when we were in the room with Guardian Nam, all we knew was that he was teaching us to read. Each day, we'd touch the cube to get our memories back, trained for four hours, then touch it again to seal them again. Huh, Rain said. I guess that's better than losing the entire four months. Sano nodded. Anyway, that's about it for feeling. Seeing is next, and it's kind of like... You need to sand out a pulse, then listen to the echo you get from feeling, except with your eyes. Hmm. Tallheart rumbled, then raised his hand. What 
Uh-huh, Sana asked, looking at him. Do, do you have a question? Tallheart blinked slowly, returning his arm to the table. Would not the raw sense be better than sight for discerning truth? I asked the guardian that exact question, Sana said, nodding. Feeling just gives you an overall impression, whether someone is tired, stressed, angry, hungry, whatever. It's pretty vague, I guess. Tallheart rumbled, unconvinced. Sana shook her head vigorously, making her short black hair whip around. If you're good at seeing, you get way more detail. She waved her hands excitedly, her passion for the subject increasingly evident. Besides, it's not like feeling stops working just because you've learned to see. That's actually the point. When someone lies, feeling and seeing won't match up. She made a curious gesture, touching the points of her index fingers and pinkies together. Then, looking through the resulting window. It's not easy spotting the differences, but that's why reading is such an exciting puzzle. I see, Rain said settling back in his chair. I guess it's like watching a person's body language and comparing it to their words. Sana nodded enthusiastically. Exactly. Some of us do that too, but it's not reliable. A normal person can control their face, but not their soul. She gestured to Rain. Or they can wear a helmet. Even if they can control their soul somewhat, their instinct is always to push the lie up to the surface. That just makes it more obvious. The best way I've found to block reading is, um... She looked at Rain, biting her lip. Guardian Nem liked using the word aura, but that's gonna be confusing with you. What was that word you used before? The thing for the space around you? Domain, Rain said. The physical and or metaphysical space controlled by an entity soul. In the void, it's directly visible. Out here, not so much. But there's still a distance component that matters for skill opposition. We've even got a class for our mages on the subject. Right, Sanna said. I'm great at reading, but I'm also better at magic than I should be for my level. It's because I know how to control my domain. Rain blinked, only now realizing that he didn't actually know what Sanna's class was. I'm classless, Sana said, seemingly reading his question right off him. She held up a hand and a bright purple orb appeared, hovering motionless above her palm. Arcane Bolt is my only real spell. My cohort had a really unlucky awakening, so I'm only level two. Rain's jaw dropped, but not from the magic. Holy shit, some of the sentinels had trouble reading me and she's doing it at level two? Impressive control, Amelia said, nodding to the perfectly stationary orb. Sana shrugged. I'm just guide sending. Casually, she tossed the orb from one hand to the other, the projectile forming a perfect parabolic trajectory, as if it were actually subject to gravity. Amelia whistled. Now you're just showing off. Sana smiled blushing slightly as she ran through an increasingly elaborate series of tricks with the captive spell, making it hover above a single finger, sending it spinning around her head, then shrinking it down and sending it through the handle of her teacup. With an effort, Rain closed his mouth. Um, I can't actually dismiss this, Sana said after a few more demonstrations, bringing the orb back to a neutral position. Normally I only do this outside, so... Leaning over, Tallheart poked the magical orb with a metal finger, popping it like a soap bubble, and letting his armor greedily drink up the disrupted magic. Thanks, Sana said, folding her hands back into her lap. Hmm, Tallheart rumbled in acknowledgement. Sorry, I think we got a little distracted, Sana said. Where were we? Amelia scoffed. Distracted? This barely counts as an aside when Rain's in the room. Tallheart rumbled again, this time in agreement. Rain sighed, refusing to take the bait. 
we were talking about seeing domains and blocking reading. Right, Sana said. So, to see someone, you need to cut through their domain with a pulse of your own domain, then sort of record the echo on your eyeballs. You can't block feeling, well, unless you're a guardian nam or something, but you can block seeing by puffing up your palin, so the pulses just glance off. It's like making yourself seem stronger without being stronger. It's hard to explain. She tugged at the color of her jacket. Wow, it's really warm in here all of a sudden. My bad, Rain said, cancelling Immolate. You looked cold, so I used a spell. I can cool the room back down again. Hang on. No. This is good, Sana said, loosening her jacket, but not taking it off. I'm always cold, so this is nice. Thank you. Anyway, pulsing your domain is the easy part. At least, if your target isn't stronger than you. And that's another thing that becomes automatic the more you practice. Recording the echo is harder. It's like tricking your brain into seeing sounds instead of hearing them. Synesthesia, Rain said, nodding. What? Sana asked. That was Rain's language, Tolhart rumbled. Oh, we call it synesthesia, Sana said, using an unfamiliar word in common. Um, well, anyway, to learn it, they gave us velvet cat potions, then... Amelia sat up sharply, interrupting her. What? They gave you a dream? No, Sana said, shaking her head firmly. Not dream. Less addictive, and not nearly as strong. Rain grimaced. Dream was a potent hallucinogen, said to transport you to a waking fantasy. It was one of a few illicit narcotics he'd heard of since he'd gotten here, and one of the tamer ones at that. Awakened chemists could make some truly nasty things if they broke bad. Tallheart rumbled unhappily. Should we seek reason, then? Sana tilted her head as she looked at him. What? Reason is our top chemist, Rain said for her benefit, though he was talking to Tallheart. I doubt he just happened to have deadly mushrooms in his pocket, though. It seems irresponsible. Hmm, Amelia said. Perhaps we should stop in four, after all. Um, Sana interrupted. The warden told me Rain already has a way to trigger synesthesia, but she didn't say what it was. Rain slapped his forehead. Oh, duh. I have a skill called detection that does that if I use it too strongly. It didn't even cross my mind. Good, that should work, Sana said. First, though, you need to learn to send the pulses. I know a few exercises. She abruptly stood, then spread her legs and thrust her palm over the table at Rain's chest, releasing a high-pitched, Ha! There was a brief silence. God, that was cute, Amelia said, raising a hand to cover her mouth. Zanna flushed pink, quickly lowering her arm and dropping back into her chair. Um... Rain smiled behind his visor, fully in agreement. Careful to keep his voice level, though, he cleared his throat professionally. Right then, shall we begin? <laughs>